Stop using VSTs. We're not in the Stone Ages anymore. Every industry producer has been yeah. making their melodies with one shots. That's the secret nowadays. Uncle Sicky, you make beats too? Huh? How else are you supposed to get the ladies, huh? Kidda, how are you going to do it? Very good. Very good. So in today's video, I want to share with you guys 10 different ways that I get saucy with one shots. Now, before we get into that, hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up and go follow me on Twitter and Instagram, everything at Sicky Beats. And uh, let's get into this. The first method isn't the most exciting, but it is fundamental. It is the ADSR and the envelope. To turn it on, hit the envelope, basically play around with these knobs. This is where you can turn any sound into a pad or you can have it cut off immediately after you hit play. Forget about the compressors, forget about all of that. This is the first place that you're gonna control the dynamics and how it sounds. The second method that I wanna share with you guys is to change the time stretching algorithm from resample to stretching. Now by changing the algorithm to stretch, that original sound, if it was one second long, when you play it up one octave, in resample it's supposed to be a half second long, but when you change the algorithm to stretch, it's going to still be one second. How does it do that? It does that by some type of audio magic that I don't understand, but what I do know is that it adds a ton of artifacts and character to the original sound. Check this out. This is the original sound still stuck at the resample mode that we set it at. If I change this to stretch and I put this sound up three octaves and I play the sound, you hear all the little phased out transient and all that. That's really cool to me. Now let's take it up a notch. If you take the multiply knob and you turn it up, you can further exaggerate all of those artifacts. Let's make this 200% longer. 300% longer, 400% longer. The third method is to import that one shot into a plugin like Arturia's Mellotron CMIV. Now when you import that one shot into a plugin like say Mellotron, you're imparting some of the characteristics of that vintage synth emulation. It sounds really cool with the Mellotron. Once I've got the Mellotron VST open, I'm going to go to the default preset under template and then click on the advanced button, which will open this bottom panel. Now I'm going to import mine from right here, drag it from here, drop it right there, and then I'm just going to stretch it out. Now, if you want to edit this and do other crazier stuff, you go to edit, turn on loop and just change the start and end times right here. That's kind of cool. Fourth trick I want to show you guys has to do with loop points. Now loop points will take a single sound and make it almost infinitely long. Now in order to set this up, you want to pull up your sample into Edison and then go into the snap menu and select zero crossing. The zero crossing point is when the audio waveform comes down right to the center and then goes either up or down. Now when I play this audio file back, you should technically not hear any clicks or pops. If you select anything in the middle of the region like this, you'll get some weird artifacts. Once you set up your snap to grid, you just want to select an interesting sounding area and then hit Alt L. Once you've set the loop points, you can drag that audio file onto an empty sampler track. And now if you hit a key on your keyboard, you'll hear that back and forth, similar to how Mellotron does it. Okay, now you listen to me, fuckers. You've been watching the free video, but not you subscribe the like the button. What the fuck? Problem, big problem. Go subscribe right now, or I'm going to beat him. You understand? Okay, back to, go, go do the video again. You can take this a step further by turning up this crossfade and then trimming the audio file back. <laughs> And if you hear the, the pop of the, the sound in the beginning, just come to your ADSR envelope, turn up the attack a little bit, and now you got a bit of a softer sound. Very cool. I won't lie, that sounds really nice. Now, the fifth trick I want to show you guys has more to do with multi-purposing your one shots. I've got this sample here that I feel I could use a better transition. And the way that I'm going to do that is to use that original one shot that you've been hearing throughout this video. 
clicking the reverse on it, dragging it into your sequencer. And then I've just pitched it up till I found matches the sample that I have. And so when I play it back, Now the sixth trick that I have for you guys has more to do with adding even more character to these one shots. And the way that I do this is again by abusing the pitch and formant tools within FL Studio. For this example, you wanna pull up your one shot inside of Edison. You can do this by clicking Control E. Now once you have the sample in Edison, you wanna hit Alt T to bring up the time pitch shifter menu. Here you can play with the different methods of stretching and pitching. Let me play you a couple of weird rapid fire examples. Do that again. So Siki, how do you soften up this sound and kind of control it a little bit more. Let me show you. When you have the sample pulled up in Edison, you can actually go to this button here. It's called the blur tool. It'll bring up this menu. A little bit goes a long way. Versus. Let's see how this sounds like if I were to play it as an instrument. Now the seventh trick I got for you has to do with using envelopes and modulating the pitch to kind of get this swooping sound. Really popular with like R&B stuff. We wanna mess with the pitch section. You're gonna to wanna to turn this amount knob and you turn it up all the way to the top. It's going to sweep up two octaves. So in order to compensate, I'm going to right click on C7 here. So it's gonna bring it back down two octaves. <laughs> Now, if we mess around with these ADSRs here, we can hone that sound more to our liking. Pretty cool. Very good. Now, in case you don't want such an exaggerated effect, you can turn this knob up 50%. That's gonna kind of keep you in that ballpark. Oh. Now, at this point in the video, there's gotta be hundreds of producers watching, sitting in front of their computers doing this. Damn, this video is so fire. I'm so excited to cook up. I'm gonna do some crazy things with that one shot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know y'all about to go get freaky when you get home. But listen, before y'all go do that, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe because this shit free and I wanna get to 100,000 subscribers this year, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now for the next one shot trick, I wanna turn this flute one shot into a pad, head over to the envelope tab and you wanna turn down the filter knob here. Now make note, this is mod X and in order to control mod X to use this effect, you turn on the envelope, turn the amount up 100%. All you gotta do is play and the filter will open and close dependent on the envelope. It sounds cool. If you want to accentuate the filter cutoff point, just turn up the resonance. You'll get a little bit more of that pointier of a sound. Kind of I'm gonna turn up the attack quite a bit here. I'm going to add some reverb. Now I want this one shot to sound even more like a pad. I'm going to take the sample. I'm gonna open it up in Edison, use that loop point trick I showed you a couple of minutes ago, drag this audio sample back into that track, turn up the attack a little bit more, go to the Mod X tab, maybe make the decay a lot more, and here we go. Now we have a pad. Now you can make it even more filtered out and a little more darker by just turning the amount knob up or, or down a little bit actually. I'm outside in my AMG. Right outside. TT. <laughs> This next one is one of the reasons why I think FL Studio is one of the best DAWs. It is to slide a bunch of notes into different notes. I have this chord progression. Now I want the first chord to bend into the next. I got my chord set up here, but you'll notice that they're different colors. Now these different colors are set up by this MIDI channel selector. You select number two, you put down your note, and then you select a second note, this one here, and you turn on this envelope mode. Now the reason why all these notes are different is so that red notes bend up to the red notes and back down to the red notes and not into the yellow 
note territory. Hopefully that makes sense. I can't think of a better way to explain this. Now, the next trick that I'm going to show you is inspired by real acoustic instruments. What I'm trying to emulate here is how a guitar player is not going to perfectly sit their finger on the fret. It's a couple of cents out of tune. This kind of creates this natural detune that you cannot mimic with guitar pedals, cannot mimic with plugins. Let me show you how you get this done. Now, in order to mimic that randomness, we only want a couple of these notes to fall out of tune. You hit Shift M and it will select a random set of notes. Then you want to hit Alt R to bring up the randomizer. This setting that I'm about to play with is only applying to the selected notes. Reset all of these knobs by Alt clicking and you want to turn off reset before processing. You want to have bipolar turned on so the pitch can go above the pitch that it's supposed to be at or below. Now, as we turn the pitch knob, subtlety is always a good thing. So I've turned this up to 3%. And all of this was super simple to do so far. So make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe, join our Discord if you want to continue the conversation. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Now for the next trick. Now for my next trick. <laughs> that sounds so cool.